Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another video of Sharpest Pond World. Now in this video, I'm going to do a complete review on the Nexus 220 filter. Let's go and check it out. So this is the Evolution Aqua Nexus 220 pond filter. Now, 220 also comes in a 310. So 310 is obviously for the bigger ponds. And um, you can also get them on automatic cleaning as well. Um, mine's a pump fed pond so I haven't gone for the automatic if you've got the bottom drain um, and you don't really want to do sort of much of the cleaning then obviously you can go for the automatic system so this is just the manual one so like I said mine's on a pump fed so it comes from a pond via the pump that's on the other side it's pumped through the hose which goes into my filter house so as it comes in I have it coming through here straight through my 25 watt Evolution Aqua UV system comes out this end and then into the inlet of the Nexus so this Nexus has only been plumbed in this is the first 24 hours this is day one so once it comes through the inlet, it's pumped in through here. It spins around here, which acts as a vortex. So all your big clumps of algae and dirt will all just stick to the sides. And then it goes into the inner chamber. So the inner chamber, this is your easy pod inner chamber. So it's got your static K1 media in there. So that will collect all the dirt, the fines. And then what happens, it comes through once it's gone through the static it goes down there and comes back out into your outer chamber so the outer chamber is a moving bed so this has k1 media it's all bubbling away through your air hose so you can need to connect that to your air pump so mine's on an evolution aqua 75 litre like I said, this is only day one, so at the minute all my media is floating at the top. As this matures, it'll go darker in colour and that's when it'll end up sinking and it can end up moving a lot more with the air. Okay, obviously also the static micro will also go a darker colour as it matures. Um, what I did as well and what I recommend to do, as soon as you start up your Nexus, is to get... Um, Again, Evolution Aqua, but you can get other brands as well. So I've used the Pom Bomb. You can get Pom Balls, you can get it in liquid form. Just add it into your outer chamber, which helps speed up the uh, biological media, which is obviously more healthy for the fish. So as it then comes through the outer chamber, it then comes through this grid here, where it drops down your outlet pipe. Now, I believe if you was on a gravity fed system, you wouldn't have the outlet pipe. So this will just be water which goes straight down your outlet, which will return back to your pond. Like I said, mine is pump fed. Any blockages, the water will obviously rise. This is your overflow. It's not gonna overflow out the filter. It will overflow back in. So as it comes out the outlet, it drops down and then you return it back to the pond. Mine's a raised pond. So as long as the outlet is lower than the top of the outlet inside the Nexus, it doesn't matter if it goes back up as like a U-bend, like you would on a sink, for example. So in, in my case, it comes out the outlet, up and back out into the pond and out to there. Another recommendation I'd use as well, the pump, if you're on a pump fed system, the pump I'd use to use it is a very pump has a maximum you can use a maximum 10,000 liters per hour pump on this system tweak it as you get your Nexus you're gonna to need to tweak it just to see what works best for you obviously you don't want too much water coming out of there um, all you got to do is just keep an eye on it in terms of where you're gonna want your pump um, so like I said this is day one of installing the Nexus so I'll do some more clips of how we go further on maybe do five days, seven days, and then go book weekly, just to see how long it takes for the media to mature. So that's day one. We'll come back, have a look at day two, and then I'll do it every couple of days and see how we're getting on with the media. 
Right guys, it's now been 48 hours since, or well, just over 48 hours since the filter has plumbed in. But well, 48 hours more or less dead on since I've added the filter media. So, when you saw at the start, it was all floating on the top. You couldn't see much bubbling around. But now, as you can see, most of it now is not floating the top, it's starting to get more buoyant. There's still some of course up here, it's still going up the sides a bit and what I do, I'll just get this wooden spoon and, um, a few times a day, I'll just come and give it a, just get them off the sides, get more into the water. But it's definitely doing its job. So this pump does 10,500 litres per hour, sorry 10,300 litres per hour and I've now got one in at 50%. Um, I'll show you the outlet pipe in a minute. I've just done a water test. My water parameters are fine. Um, the nitrites, which I did before, which was about 0 0.5, is a little bit clear. So that's already dropped. And the ammonia, the ammonia is not anything near toxic. It's just very, very slight. But that's good because it means I need some ammonia to obviously to get the filter kick-started which in turn because that's the beginning of the cycle which then will turn obviously to nitrites and then go to nitrates my nitrates were high anyway I don't know why my nitrates were high beforehand but I've only tested for ammonia and nitrites after 48 hours so I probably won't do that again in two more days and now I know that's still quite low so I might leave it now three days but I just wanted to come and show you obviously how it's going. In terms of sediment, I'm doing it at the right time of year to be fair, because it might not be like this if it was the middle of summer, but there's hardly anything in here. <laughs> because I've only got a 75 litre air pump, I can only really add another 25 litres of K1 in here, but I'm not gonna do any of that in terms of adding to it until next spring. So I will keep it as the 50 litres that comes with it. Sorry, excuse the noise, someone's having uh, fireworks just over there so and then um, so yeah I'm gonna you get the 50 litres with it and then I think at, come spring that's when I might add another 25 litres because I can't add more than that unless I go get another air pump but I don't really want to do that because I've just bought that but for the size of my pond I don't think I'm going to need more than 75 litres of uh, K1 in here anyway right guys I've not got my normal vlogging camera, I've got my phone out because I wasn't going to do an update today but this is day 5, so this is the Sunday we installed it on the Tuesday look at the media now doing its job it's not all stuck at the top it's not going up the sides it's bubbling away how it should be and when I've seen on forums and online people have said sometimes it's took a week sometimes it's took two weeks some said it have even took longer this is after five days. Five days. I thought it would have been actually when I looked at it yesterday because there wasn't much at the sides. So I'm not going to give it a stir. But at least it's working, it's working. That's gradually changing colour. And I believe all this will change colour as well. It'll go like a darker colour, all the media bubbling away like it's sure this is a proper moving bed now still running at 50% I'm not sure if I did say but I've got the UV on so yeah pleased and if we just have a quick look at the flow perfect the pond itself I mean don't forget we are going into it is autumn in a minute so it's quite clear anyway but I reckon this is even clearer than what it was when I first installed it definitely so yeah that's the one I might leave on so yeah chuck to bits right so now we're on day 10 of using the Nexus now the pond is definitely definitely cleared up but at the same time we are going in but we're in autumn so things are starting to die off anyway so the pond will clear up but water qualities have been absolutely fine I've been testing the water every two days um, no ammonia no nitrates 
no nitrites, which is the worst thing. The only thing that's a little bit high is my nitrates, but that's always been high, even though I've got plants. So even before the Nexus, I've always had high nitrates. So let's go and check the filter. The media, absolutely doing what it should be doing. It's all bubbling away. None of it's floating at the top. None of it's stuck on the side. In terms of clarity, this is what's going in the outlet. Look at that. How clear is that water that's going back into the pond? So this is obviously coming through the biological bit, then comes in here, which is the outlet. There is sediment at the bottom, but it's on the bottom. It's crystal clear water going back down that pipe. Now, we're gonna give it its first clean. So this is the inlet. Again, it's crystal clear water coming in. There is sediment in there, which you can see. If you look around here, this is where the algae is. So the stringy algae is all, it's starting to like, it's come in and it's hooked itself to the air pipe. Um, and if you can just see there, it's on the grill as well. This is the middle section, which looks clean. Once you stir it up, it's not. So we're gonna give it that first clean now, and then you can see how the clean and how easy it's done. Now during the summer, once you empty the inner chamber, the easy side, sometimes people will do it two, maybe three times. I'm sure I'm gonna be the same in the summer, but I think this is only gonna need the once. So let's see and see how easy it is. All right, so guys, first thing we need to do, you put in the plunger. And as you can see, the water will rise up. So as it rises up, we turn off the inlet. Oh. Turn off the pump. And then we put in the slide. So then once you've done that, we switch on the air for the inner chamber, which gets that bubbling away. And we turn off the air in the outer chamber so that one stops so while that's bubbling away we can leave that for about five maybe ten minutes it lets all the static k1 micro agitate so all the dirt comes off so this will end up being filthy so we'll leave that now for about five to ten minutes right so this has been going now for about ten minutes so what i'm going to do um, I'm just going to get my daughter who's come to help, just hold the camera. Well. Because I can't hold them and move this at the same time. So you can set this off. Okay. Put your hand, oh, I'm turning this light off. You can get your hand in there, agitate it a bit, but I'll just use a wooden spoon and just give it a bit of a, a bit of a stir with a wooden spoon. Say it's getting your hands wet if you don't want to, get your hands dirty. Keep turning this light off, this light switch is in totally the wrong place. You can see all the muck going into this middle bit. None's gone into here because that's crystal clear. And then we get the outlet and we flush all that to waste. These are very stiff. Just so you know, I can't even turn it. Okay, so that will all empty away. Now my waste pipe, like I said before, it comes out, goes down the back and goes out. So once that is all empty, you can just see the last bit at the bottom where the air pipe is. Again, you can just give that a bit of a stir. In all honesty, it's probably best just to get your hand in there. You've just got to be very. That's one of the reasons I did it with a spoon because these grills on the side they are very sharp, and you can easily cut your finger. But the good thing is, there's not a lot of dirt really in there. So I've got like a toilet brush which I've got here and what I'm going to do with this you can just give it a bit of a, a bit of a scrub down 
It's where all this sediment is stuck. Let's give it a bit of a scrub. So you could get your roast pipe, give it a swirl down. This, because it's not really that dirty yet, it's not really going to need it. Although I'm just going to go and put my hand down here because this is what I need to get out. That's all stuck to the pipe so we can get rid of that. Um, and this is where I have to stand on here because, so we can see down this side. As you can see down here, look, all the algae. Do we get rid of that? This light switch, totally in the wrong place. I keep touching it with my bum. So, so it's all, it's not too bad down there. There's bits of algae and stuff, so I could probably just give it a bit of a swirl down, and that'll just go down straight to waste. Now, obviously, if you if this was a bit quite dirty, so in the summer. You're going to have to probably do this process a couple of times, maybe three times, just to get rid of all the crap. So once we let the water back in, you'll be able to see how dirty it is and if it needs it again. So actually, when I get the hose pipe, give it a bit of a, a, bit of a rinse, get rid of all the crap that's stuck around the edges. Next job. Now when you, if you buy a Nexus, especially if you're getting it brand new, um, even if you're buying it second hand, it should come with this anyway. So if you're ever unsure with the cleaning or you ever forget anything, it comes with this little instruction. So if it's pump fed like mine, you've got this side tells you what order to do everything in. And obviously if you're gravity fed, that's on the other side because you do it a slightly different way. Obviously you don't have a pump to switch off and things like that. But mine is pump fed, so I always keep that to one side just in case. So then, to start everything back up, we now just go to the reverse order. So we go back to the waste pipe, make sure that is all turned off. We switch the air valves back round, so we open that one, and close that one, so that stops the air in there, and that gets that one bubbling away again. So then we can open the inlets, so we'll let water back in. God, these are really stiff. Take out the slide. And switch the pump. It's back on. And water then will come back in through there. Take out the plunger. And watch it all fill back up. You'll see the water it will rise until it gets to back to the top of the outlet. That's where your water level is going to be. So we can just see it is coming now, ready to go over. So now everything's back and running. You can see there is sediment swirling around. There's a few finds. But like I say, in the summer, when things are really dirty and it's full of fish waste, that's going to need another clean or maybe a third. I think we can get away with a one at the minute. I am going to still do this weekly through the winter season just to keep on top of water quality and keep me on the water quality anyway. But that's how easy it is to do a Nexus filter clean. I can put my little slide back on its hook put the lid back on great stuff everything water level wise is how it should be the water is going back down the outlet and it's coming back out the pond Whee! fish love it the fish love hanging around here we'll sit about here Watch all the flow of water come, and I'll just sit there facing the flow, little tails going. It's great. So, yeah, that's it.
all in all, overall opinion, would I get a Nexus filter if I could do it all again? Yes. Um, I think an absolutely brilliant bit of kit, especially biologically. Um, I'll probably come back and update again come the summer of how the mechanical stage sort of handles it. For those who obviously can't afford three grand for a drum, I think it's the next best thing. Um, all I'd say is, like I've said in these clips, just you've just got to get the flow right. If you get the flow right, I think it's fine. I'll switch these newer models as well with the micro K1 static in the center. I know the old ones don't have that, so I think they trap all the fines really well. And like we said before, which you can't really see on this video, once you get into the outer bit, there's hardly any dirt in there at all. It is all kept in that inner bit. So for those that are looking for a Nexus, I would highly recommend that you go and get one. Do your research on it as well. Um, I think ideally they're probably better on a pump on a gravity fed pond rather than a pump fed pond. I think it's a lot easier but like I said mine is pump fed and is a raised pond and you haven't got to have it higher than the wall at all. The only bit that's got to be higher than the water level is your outlet pipe. And mine is, I'd probably say it's there, which coming over the pond is about there. So I could have had that bit lower down, but obviously you've got to think of the outlet because the outlet comes there. I needed to go across that wall. So, so for those that are on a pump fed, you haven't got your have your nexus so high up at all as long as the top of the outlet pipe is above the water level that's all you need and of course you've just got to get the outlet pipe to come over your pond wall if it's a raised pond so guys thanks for watching that nexus review if you're not subscribed already i recommend you hit the subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up it really helps my channel out with the algorithm um, hit the bell to get your notifications and then hopefully we'll see you next time for another video on Sharpie's Pond World. Bye.